Travel Do! With your host, Vivian B! On today's episode, Peter Greenaway's Ascend to Nuts! Well, alright! A is for Angelfish. Butterfly. C is for Cat. Dog. E is for Elephant. Fish. G is for Green Away. As in Peter Green Away. Hey everybody, welcome to VCR, Vivian to my review. Today we are going to be reviewing A Zen to Knots by Peter Green Away. A Zen to Two Knots. <laughs> Uh, it's about... Can I just tell the whole story of what I think of it? So it starts out with two die from a swan crash, and the lady in it, her leg got cut off because it bleeded in a car crash. But she didn't die, the two wives did. And then the boys, the brothers, are, are doing different things because they miss their wives. A guy with the brown hair, one who's watching animals decompose. Na 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 After they die. The grossest one was the alligator because when the bugs went in, it looks like it was breathing. And some, there was an apple. And then his the other brother watching movies about how life began. The film is kind of like a series of paintings. Very painterly compositions. Very symmetrical. That mirror the things of duality that run throughout the film. Every scene is one big shot. Very carefully composed. Very carefully lit. Where all the action takes place within the frame instead of being reliant on the editing to tell the story. Greenway paints each scene within the frame, calling mise en scène, meaning the action happens in the frame, not between the frames. It has recurring themes and motifs like twins, like twins playing cards with other twins, while pictures of twins are on the wall, and there's a lot to do with symmetry and the idea that we ourselves are twins. We have two arms, two eyes, two legs, two nostrils, two ears. We are twins of ourselves. And that's what Greenaway is trying to say, that in our own reflections is both our salvation and our demise. Among the characters in the movie is a surgeon who wants to be a painter. Particularly, he wants to be Vermeer. Vermeer was a Dutch painter, born in the 1600s, and he painted in the Baroque styles of the time. And they specialize in images of daily life. You know, like normal things, like a lady with a red hat, or like a milkmaid. There are seven nods to Vermeer in the film, including this reappearing character in a red hat. And then there's a surgeon in the movie that wants to cut off this woman's legs, both of them that he can paint her in the style of Vermeer's The Milkmaid. Since in the painting, as in all of Vermeer's paintings, her legs are not seen. Peter Greenaway, the director, is himself a painter. He went to art school in the 1960s to to study painting, and eventually he became a filmmaker. Because, as he said, he wanted to have a soundtrack to his paintings. So he started making experimental films. My favorite is H is for House. He eventually made a move to longer movies, starting with The Falls, a movie that sounds like a Thomas Pynchon novel, but it isn't. It's a three-hour-long compendium, 92 short films, each about people which have the word fall in their name, which have all experienced something called a V-U-E, a violent unknown event. It's a very weird movie, also very good. After that, he directed what he considered his first real film, The Draftsman's Contract, followed then by A Zen Two Knots which we are reviewing today. Let me just start by saying this movie has everything. I'm talking swans, yo. 
I'm talking swans. I'm talking twins. I'm talking twins. I'm talking zebras. I'm talking a lady with one leg. I'm talking a guy eating broken glass for breakfast. And when he's asked, what is he doing? He says, having breakfast. I'm talking ladies in red hats with no underwear. I'm talking zebras. I'm talking little dead alligators. I'm talking the guy throwing fruit. I'm talking decomposing wildlife. I'm talking flamingos. I'm talking constant references to the Dutch painters. I'm talking Vermeers on Vermeers on Vermeers. There's also 26 different lighting styles. A literal alphabet of light. Everything from stripes, water reflections, to rainbows. And oh, don't get me even started on those snails. I'm talking snails on snails on snails. Hey! I'm talking snails on snails on snails. Say hello to your mother for me. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the greatest last film shot shots in history. Not for its spectacle, but for its lack of spectacle. In a film that's so consciously artful, the final shot is so simple and quiet. That surprised me. It's a movie where everyone's trying to survive terrible things by reliving terrible things and obsessing on terrible things the way artists do. It's a movie where grief itself is a death sentence. It's not just the person who dies. It's the people they leave behind and how they suffer that this movie is concerned about. As funny as it is, and that as self-aware as as it it is, it's genuinely moving. Feel bad for the brothers. I think the movie is funny. I... I like that's funny, and it has animals, flamingos, guy spitting up blood. I also like when he throw that blonde guy in the movie throws the ball of fruit on the lady. And I also like the pink hotel room with the bathtub on top of the rug. Yeah, I like the little girl and the baby. I really like the ending because then it explodes with all the snails. It's a wonderful film and I liked it a lot. I give it five shabooms. Shaboom, 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 and shaboom because I already said one of them. So five. I'd say see it. Seek it out. It's available on Blu-ray. You can also get this cool book about it which has the screenplay and a short interview with Peter Greenway. So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And by the way, one more thing. Peter Greenway, don't kill yourself when you turn 80, because you're great, and we need you. We want to see what kind of movies you make when you're 100, because you're the only guy out there who thinks cinema can be more what it is. So please, stay alive. Locus. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to whoever's watching it. Sometimes to my dad, he's being weird. <laughs>